Welcome to finding integrating factors in practice. So recall we had two special situations for integrating factors. So if um, we had my minus nx divided by n was equal to a function p of x solely in terms of x, um, we have integrating factor mu of x equal to e to the integral of p of x dx. Similarly, if we had nx minus my over m equal to some function q of y solely in y, then we have integrating factor mu of y equal to e to the integral of q of y dy. So these next two problems uh, that we'll see in this video will take one of these two forms. And so we'll be able to find an integrating factor solely in one variable. So first let's consider the equation 10xy plus 3y plus five, all of that times dx plus negative five x minus four, that times dy is equal to zero. First thing to do is check whether or, not, or verify this equation is not exact. So for this, our m is 10 x y plus three y plus five. Our n is negative five x minus four. So if we find the partial of m with respect to y, we wind up just with 10x plus three. If we find the partial of n with respect to x, we simply get negative five. And these two are definitely not equal to each other. So this is not exact. So our next step then is to go about finding an integrating factor. So we are going to check two things. First off is uh, my minus nx over n, a function in x. If this holds, then we can just run with that. So my, we had 10x plus three, and x uh, we had uh, negative five, so we're gonna subtract negative five. And now we divide by n, which was negative five x minus four. So this becomes 10 x plus eight over negative five x minus four, or two times five x plus four over negative times five x plus four. Uh, and we just get negative two. So this was a function in x from the beginning, um, but we actually get a very simple function in x. Right? So we have a simple function in x. So then we can use integrating factor mu of x is equal to e to the integral of negative two dx. Or in other words, mu is equal to e to the negative two x. 
From there, we're going to multiply the original equation by our integrating factor. So multiply the original equation. I mu. So our original equation, we had 10xy plus 3y plus 5dx. So we'll have e to the negative 2x times 10xy plus 3y plus 5dx. And then plus e to the negative 2x times negative 5x minus 4 dy is all equal to zero. At this point, since this is exact, this piece here should be f partial, uh, the partial derivative with respect to x of some capital function f. And the second piece should be the partial with respect to y. Now, if I look at which of those two integrals should be easier to take, that second piece has no y's in it, so it should be very easy to integrate with respect to y. So let's go ahead and use the fact that the partial with respect to y of capital F is equal to e to the negative 2x times negative 5x minus 4. So we get f of x, y should be equal to the integral of e to the negative 2x times negative 5x minus 4 dy. At this point, that was really just integrating a constant times dy. So we should have our y come along. So this becomes, we have our negative, I'm gonna rewrite that as negative times 5x plus 4, factoring out the negative. We have our e to the negative 2x, and this whole thing is just multiplying y. Then, because we are treating x as a constant, our plus c is dependent on x. We will view this as plus psi of x. From here, we need to solve for psi of x. to give myself just a little more room. Um, so I should have written that at this point we're, we started solving the exact equation. That's where we chose to use fy equals e to the negative 2x times negative 5x minus 4. Um, choosing that and then integrating, we are solving the exact equation. And now we're sort of on a subset step where we need to solve for that psi of xy. Sorry, or sorry, psi of x. So at this point, um, since we're looking for psi of x, it would make sense to differentiate with respect to x. So we have f of x, y is equal to negative, in parentheses, 5x plus 4, e to the negative 2x times y plus psi of x. So now we want to find the first partial with respect to x. So uh, doing a little product rule, we'll have a negative, 5 e to the negative 2x times y. And then we'll have to differentiate the e to the negative 2x. That would become negative 2 times e to the negative 2x, or plus uh, 2 times 5x plus 4 e to the negative 2x times y. And then we would have plus psi prime of y. Sorry, psi prime of x. From here, if we do a little simplification, this is negative 5e to the negative 2x times y. 
plus 10x e to the negative 2x plus 8 e to the negative 2x. Oh, both of these should have times y, times y, and then plus psi prime of x. Or this is equal to 10xy e to the negative 2x plus 3y e to the negative 2x plus psi prime of x. Now, if we scroll back up and see what our f of x should have looked like, we, it should have been e to the negative 2x times 10xy plus 3y plus 5. So this should equal uh, 10xy e to the negative 2x plus 3y e to the negative 2x plus 5e to the negative 2x. Again, that's using this piece here. So the first two terms match. So that tells us that psi prime of x should equal 5e to the negative 2x. And that means that we can take psi of x to be negative 5 halves e to the negative 2x. So putting this all together, we have our f of xy is equal to negative 5x plus 4 e to the negative 2x times y minus 5 halves e to the negative 2x. And then our solution, we just set that equal to c. So this is our final solution, our general solution, uh, solving that equation. Um, just something to note, uh, our integrating factor was e to the negative 2x, that nowhere involves dividing by zero. So this never involves dividing by zero. So we have no lost solutions. So that general solution is indeed our solution set. All right, now let's go ahead and do one more example. So let's consider the equation sine of x times sine of y dx plus cosine of x times sine of y minus cosine of x times cosine of y plus 3y dy. So first off, let's just show that this is not exact. So we'll check. So our m is sine of x times sine of y, giving us that our partial with respect to y would be sine of x times cosine of y. Our n is much lengthier. Our n is cosine of x sine of y minus cosine of x cosine of y plus 3y. So our nx, we would get negative sine x times sine of y. Then we would have plus sine of x times cosine of y. And that plus 3y will go to 0, since we're just differentiating with respect to x. So we do have that my is not equal to nx.
And so we have that these are not exact. So our next state is to look for an integrating factor. So we can first look at um, is my minus nx divided by n a function of x. Um, n is rather complicated. I'm going to guess no, but we can check. So my was sine x cosine y. And from that, we are subtracting negative sine x sine y plus sine x cosine y. And then dividing that whole thing by n, which was cosine of x sine of y minus cosine of x, cosine of y, plus three y. And even if we simplify this, uh, we wind up with sine of x times sine of y over cosine of x, sine of y, minus cosine of x, cosine of y plus 3y. And this is not a function of x. And so that one doesn't work. So now we'll try the other variation. So next up is, is nx minus my over m, a function of y. So nx was negative sine x sine of y plus sine of x cosine of y. Then we are going to subtract my, which was sine of x, cosine of y. Then we will divide through by m. m was sine of x, sine of y. So if we divide through by sine of x times sine of y, this one simplifies nicely. Sine x cosine y minus sine x cosine y cancel. So we are looking at negative sine of x sine of y over sine of x sine of y. And this is just negative one. So this works. This is a function of y. So we will take our integrating factor to be mu of y is equal to e to the integral of negative one dy. And so we get our integrating factor is e to the negative y. Once again, this integrating factor does not involve dividing by zero. So this never involves division by zero. So we should have no lost solutions.
So from here, let's go ahead and multiply our original equation by the integrating factor. So if we multiply the original equation by mu, we will have e to the negative y times uh, sine of x sine of y. dx plus e to the negative y times our n, I apologize for the scrolling, was cosine of x sine y minus cosine of x cosine y plus 3y. We're going to multiply by cosine of x cosine y minus cosine of x. Did I have that backwards? I do have it backwards. All right, cosine of x sine y was the first function or first term. Then minus cosine of x cosine of y and then plus three y. And this is dy and then equals zero. So I can tell you right now, I would much rather integrate that first component uh, in terms of x as opposed to the second component in terms of y. So this first component is our fx. Second component is our fy. So now if we go about solving the exact equation, We will set fx as equal to e to the negative y sine of x sine of y. And we get the f of x comma y should be equal to an integral of e to the negative y sine of x sine of y dx. Here we're treating y as a constant, so we really only need to pay attention to that sine of x. So this would become negative uh, e to the negative y cosine of x sine of y. Then we have our constant plus c, but that depends on y, so we do plus psi of y. From here, we need to solve for psi of y. So we have f of x, y is equal to negative e to the negative y cosine of x sine of y plus psi of y. Taking the partial with respect to y, so we get psi prime of y. Um, with respect to y, we have to do a little product rule using that negative e to the negative y first. That becomes positive e to the negative y times cosine x sine of y. Then switching to the sine of y term, that will go to cosine of y. So we will have minus e to the negative y cosine of x cosine of y and then we will have plus psi prime of y this should equal that e to the negative y times cosine x sine y minus cosine x cosine y plus uh, 3y So this should equal e to the negative y times cosine x sine y minus cosine x cosine of y 
plus 3y. So uh, those first two terms match the first two terms of our fy. So this gives us then that we should have psi prime of y is equal to e to the negative y times 3y or 3y e to the negative y. And from here, we have to integrate. So if we do our integration, uh, we will need to do a little integration by parts. So we have psi of y is equal to the integral of 3y e to the negative y. So integration by parts, we will have u dv, 3y goes to 3 goes to 0, and e to the negative y will go to negative e to the negative y, which will go back to positive e to the negative y. And we plus the product minus the product. So we have psi of y is equal to negative 3y, e to the negative y uh, minus 3e to the negative y. So putting this all together, oops, my screen froze one moment. We had psi of y was equal to negative 3y e to the negative y minus 3e to the negative y. And then putting this all together, our final solution, our f of x, y was equal to negative e to the negative y cosine of x plus sine of y, so negative e to the negative y cosine of x times sine of y. minus 3y e to the negative y, minus 3 e to the negative y. And this whole thing is set equal to c. So this is our final solution uh, for this differential equation once we have converted it into uh, exact form. And as I mentioned previously in this problem, we did not introduce any dividing by zero with our integrating factor, so we are not missing any solutions with this general solution.